before we can talk about reinforcement learning, we need to talk about expected values. Now, an expected value is essentially an average in which the values added up are weighted by the likelihood of their occurrence. For example, the expected value of a die roll is 3.5. The reason for this is that if you consider each possibility, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and you multiply it by the likelihood of its occurrence, which for a six-sided die, there's a one-sixth chance of each result I'm multiplying each of these values by 1 over 6, and I add up all of these results, then the outcome is 3.5. Now, because the probability is equal for each side of the die, I could have just added these values up and divided by 6, which, as I mentioned before, is the average. But we could also have a weighted die in which certain outcomes are more likely than others. For example, what if I had a die where 6 would be rolled with a probability of 1 -third, and then all of the others were equally likely? Well, then I would have 5 times 2 over 15, and 4 times 2 over 15, and so on for all the other values. And once again, if I add these up, in this case, I'll find that the value is 4. Now, when you're calculating an expected value, it is very important that you consider every possible outcome. The way you do that is assuring that all the probabilities add up to 1. So in this case, 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus a sixth, and so on, six times. If you add up these values, the result is 1. The same is true for these six values. If you add them up, the result will be 1. And that always needs to be true. Now, let's consider an agent who wants to, say, balance on a ledge. In fact, we'll just say this is me. I'm walking along, trying to balance myself. And I'm on some ledge. And let's say that my goal is to get to the end of this, but that due to factors outside my control, like the wind or just issues with my balance, um, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to move forward perfectly. Um, so if I choose to move forward, let's say there's an 80% chance I'll be able to pull that off. And because I'm showing off, if I do it successfully, I'll get a reward, which will assign a numerical value. Let's say the reward is 1 if I pull that off. Of course, I could also fall to either side. Now, one side is water. So it's a little pool down here. And so if I fall into that, well... That would be bad. I'd look humiliated, right? I'm showing off. So let's say that that has a reward of negative 1, um, but that it's only likely to happen, say, 10% of the time. Now, I could also fall that way, but that would just be falling back onto uh, the concrete at the ledge. So. I would stumble for a second, but I wouldn't actually fall in and get wet here. So the reward there is not as bad. It's only negative 0 
Now, you may find it weird that I'm using reward for bad outcomes. We can simply say that a punishment is a reward with a negative value. That makes everything universal. Our language is easier to deal with. We don't have to distinguish between rewards and punishments. But a reward with a negative value is essentially a punishment. So if I choose to go forward, what is the expected outcome given these values? Well, it would be 0 0.8 times 1. There's an 80% chance of me being able to move forward plus 0 0.1 times negative 1. That's the result of me falling in the water here. Plus 0 0.1 times negative 0 0.1. And so that is the outcome of me stumbling on the edge of the pool but not actually falling in the water. So if you add these up, you should get a value of 0 0.69. So in this case, the expected value of me showing off is 0 0.69.